So I'm sitting here today in the craft room at my boyfriend's and I'm doing some porcupine earrings. And you'll probably, well the camera's shaking right now so I should probably explain that one. Um, he's got the washing machine going and every once in a while the floor is going to shake, it shakes the whole house. So every once in a while the camera's going to be a bit shaky and you might hear the thing spinning out. And I was going to say, he's out there playing video games, so you might hear that every once in a while. Explosions or screams or whatever it is that's playing out there. Anywho, I felt that it was time that we had a little bit of a talk about porcupines. Because I work a lot with porcupines. I do jewelry out of their quills. And I pick up their bodies off the road. So I've gained a lot of experience with porcupines over the years. And even though we live in this lovely age of technology, there's still a lot of myths about porcupines. And I heard a lot of this stuff growing up, but I didn't believe it. And I thought you'd have to be a complete idiot to believe a lot of these myths, but people still believe it. And I get people asking me all the time, about porcupines shooting their quills and needing to cut the ends off of porcupine quills in order to get them to pull out from a dog's face and all sorts of really freaking weird stuff like there's this one that I heard when, from the time I was a child and I knew it was complete and utter nonsense but I'll get into that one a little later <laughs> um, first we're going to talk about porcupines shooting their quills um, that is completely impossible. Um, porcupines' quills, they're just a modified hair. They can't shoot their quills, as much like we cannot shoot our hairs out of our head. Um, the way that porcupine quills work is when they're relaxed and they're just going about their daily business, doing cute little porcupine things like climbing trees and nibbling on shrubs and stuff like that, digging for roots, just normal porcupine daily business. Their hair is laying flat against the body. It's not doing anything other than just being uh, extra thick hair. Um, kind of like whiskers, I guess, only pointier. And those quills, very much like our hairs, when the animal gets scared, their hairs rise up on the back of their bodies. Um, much like we're scared, our hairs stand up on our back of our necks and on our arms. We get really spooked or upset. Our hairs bristle. Dogs, cats, their hair bristles when they get agitated and upset. So the porcupine gets upset and their hairs bristle. That causes the quills that are laying like this to rise up because they're scared. So. If an animal comes in to bite the porcupine, they're going to get the quill. They can't shoot their quills. They're not that easy to get out. Um, I was really lucky the first few porcupines that I collected, that their quills came out really great. You j I just, as you can see in my collecting porcupine quills video, you just follow along with the body, you pet them, you grab on the hairs, and you rip backwards. And first few times I did it, the first few porcupine corpses I worked with, it worked great. They come right out. But I don't know what it was about those porcupines, but every porcupine afterwards I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting the pills out. It's it's like pulling hairs or feathers. It's the same material, no matter what species. They're made out of creatine, so it's not that easy to get a porcupine quill out in the first place. A lot of the times what happens when a dog has put their face into a porcupine is the dog is coming in with quick force, the porcupine is scared, they swing their tail quickly and the quills actually break off in the face. Um, also on the end of the tail there's a lot of shorter quills and those quills are very they're very, well, I guess you could say they're sharp. They're also really easily to go in because where they're so sharp, they're very solid. It's hard to bend those short quills. Those are the quills 
that you usually see in animal emergency room shows in the throats of dogs because they're on the end of the tail and the dog is biting the tail, the tail goes in the mouth and those little quills which are kind of easy to get out along the bottom of the tail. If I, if I had a porcupine corpse here I could show you these little tiny things. They're, they're tiny. Um, I don't have any in here because these are all beading quality clothes. Actually there are a couple of real short ones in there. I can dig those out. Anyway, those little ones, those ones are a lot easier to pull out. I'll show you an actual quill here. I can get it out. I've got so many little quills in here. And all of these quills in this jar have not been um, debarbed or anything. So you could actually see me get a needle stick injury. There's those two. Those aren't the ones I'm going for. This one right down there. That is a end of tail one. I can get it up. These tweezers are so freaking bad. They're just jewelry pliers, right? They're just doing jewelry, right? So they're not the best. All right. And I'll get a long one too. I'm gonna be really careful with my quills here because as I said I met my boyfriend's and he's got a little dog, so we don't wanna leave quills on the floor lying around for our little buddy to step on or get into his nose because he's just all over the place. Anyway, if I can get up here, the quills that are on the end of the tail. They're short like this, and they are really, really firm. Like it's, it takes a lot of force to bend that quill. So this quill is going to be more easily inserted into your face or your hand or any anything that you try to grab this little porcupine with. But look, I can firmly tap the end of that and it's not going in me. It's it's sharp but it's not razor sharp. It's it's quill sharp. You have to put pressure behind this to get this to go in. Um the next size quill and when you when you take quills you can actually go like this slowly. You can feel them being you can feel the roughness kind of like a cat's tongue. Now if you go like this, this part of the quill you can't feel anything, but go like that you can. Um, this is an next size up quill. This is, it's on the base of the tail, whereas the shorter ones are more the tip. Um, they are, as you can see here, more flexible. They, like, it's actually bent here, see? And this is what happens with quills. You try to get into it and it bends. But still, again, I'm putting good speed behind this and I'm not sticking myself. Um, it's hard to, to accidentally stab yourself with one of these things here. Like you can hear that. it It's sticking, but it's not sticking in. So, porcupine quills, it's just a modified hair, it's, there's nothing too special about it. And this quill is no longer bead usable because it has bent. What happens is, like, the quick speed of a dog or anything else coming at the porcupine breaks the quill off. It bends it. I've seen a lot of porcupines with bent quills roaming around just because they're so clumsy. They fall out of trees <laughs> and roll down hills and everything. Anyway, when you go further up the body towards the shoulders, you get quills like this. And these quills are very flexible. And see, that didn't even break. It's just, just flexible. And they're not hollow. Um, there is a spongy material inside, like feathers, feather quills. 
and these quills. The only difference between a feather and a porcupine quill is that this does not have modified hairs coming off the sides. That is the only difference. They're the exact same material. They, depending on where it's located, it can be as hard to pull out. And, well, porcupine quills do have that little point with the barbs on the end, but it's the same material, it's the same design as a feather on the inside. If I cut this open with a scalpel blade and butterflied it, you'd be able to see all the spongy material on the inside. It's a very much like the um, bulrushes, the, the grass bulrushes. When you, they, they're like the same, like the same texture on the inside. It's kind of spongy. And that's why it can be hard to get your head pins and wires up through because sometimes, I don't even think I have one here, but I can cut this one and use it. You can um, accidentally move the, um, the internal materials around inside the quill. You can see I need a head pin. You can move that material around and then your quill's no longer usable because you have messed it up. You gotta be, as stated in one of my other videos, you gotta be really careful when you put this in through there. They go right up the center, but I'm gonna deliberately rip the side out of this thing. So, first, I'm gonna show you, if I can, how clear that, how white that looks, right? I'm doing this on a webcam, so I have no idea how to use that thing. Anyway, you can see that that is fairly white. If I take this quill, <laughs> and I try to get the center out of it, go up the sides, yeah, I can create a plug. I'm bending my plug, or my, bending my um, head pin, Let's see if I can get some of this material out for you. Alright, you can see on the tip there that there is. You see how much pressure I was using on that to um, get it to come out. See that white puffy stuff there? There we go. See? That's what's on the inside of the quills. It's the same as what's on the inside of a feather. So, quills are not hollow. Um, if you cut the end of the quill off, it's not going to release the barbs or you can make the barbs shrink back up so you can pull the quill. All it does is it makes the quill a little more easier to squish. And see, because now that I got that stuff out, you can actually squish it and make this quill fairly flat. So that's going to make it a lot harder for a veterinarian to pull the quills out of your dog's face if you cut the end of the quill off and try to pull on it because it has more structural stability as a cone-like shape than it does when it's easily flattened. Um, anyway, on to other myths about porcupines. Um, another thing that I was reading is about the antibacterial qualities of the porcupine quill, which is true. And I was reading an article about myths about porcupines where they said that this was not true. And they're saying that it's just an old wives' tale that porcupines have an antibacterial secretion on their quills. And this has been documented. I can't remember who did the studies, um, but it was done a very long time ago. Porcupine quills are coated in a fatty acid, and I can't remember the name of it, but it does kill quite a few bacterial strains and oddly enough it is more concentrated in the summer months i think it's like 18 percent of the lipids in the pork in the fat on the porcupine quill is this fatty acid that has the antibacterial properties and in the winter time it's, it's cut down to five percent and I think the reason that is, is because in the summertime, the animals 
they were moving around more, it's more humid, it's hotter. They're up in the trees, they're not sleeping in the burrows as much, so they're more prone to accidents, and that is when they need this antibacterial ointment type material on them, is in the summertime when they're more prone to injuries, and the bacteria levels are higher because of the heat and humidity. In the winter time, there's not as much bacteria around that's going to be affecting a porcupine in the wild, and where they are sleeping most of the time, they semi-hibernate. You can still see them wandering around on good days, but if it's a blizzard or a real deep snow, they're not coming out. Um, they sleep a lot, so they're not going to need the extra protection that they do need in the summertime. So one of the most interesting myths that I've heard about a porcupine, which I've always known from the time I was a small t child, was absolute and utter nonsense, is that porcupines eat kittens. Now, everybody who just heard me say that statement is just thinking, what the bloody hell is she going on about porcupines eating kittens? Well, I will tell you, when I was little, I was always told to kill every single porcupine that I saw because they ate kittens. And I was like, what? They eat kittens? And they're like, yes, porcupines eat kittens. Now, this came from relatives of mine. And I was told that when they were children themselves, they were told this myth by their grandmother, who would be my great-grandmother. And they were encouraged to kill every porcupine they seen because they killed the barn kittens. So they'd be running around with pitchforks in the field Dabbing porcupines to death and taking their either dead or half dead corpses across the fields into their cousin's cellar and throwing them down into the root cellar and leaving them there. The, these piles and piles of porcupine corpses because they honestly believed, and I think some of my older relatives to this day still do believe, that porcupines eat kittens. And that is the most ridiculous thing that I had ever heard. Like, ever. Porcupines are herbivores. Like, you look at a porcupine's teeth, and they're not killing cats. <laughs> they have no reason to kill a cat. If they see a cat coming, they're just going to bristle their quills and turn their butt to them and, and say, I have no time for you. You're a tiny little cat and I'm this huge quilled creature and you can't do nothing to me. I've never even heard of cats trying to hunt a porcupine unless it's a large African lion going after those African porcupines. I mean, that would be a rare circumstance anyway because of the natural, because of the natural defenses that the porcupine has. It's just mind-boggling ridiculous that anybody would believe that a porcupine would eat a cat. Um, porcupines are rodents. Some rodents will take the opportunity to eat meat, but it's not too often that they will actually kill to obtain meat. They're, they're usually scavengers. Um, I know rats, some mice and red squirrels are have been known to kill not just their own young, but the young of different species, to to eat them. It just happens. With eating their own young, it's usually a, a stress response. Like there's something going on in their habitat that is causing great stress on them that they feel like they have to kill their young. So that is just how that works. There's another myth of porcupines is that they destroy whole forests. And that's not true. Um, they can kill a tree. I have seen them strip all the bark off of smaller trees. But the thing is, is that unless you have a lot of porcupines, it's not going to devastate an entire forest. They'll just take out one or two trees. And the thing is, is that that service is needed in the global scale of the ecosystem. Because when a porcupine kills a tree, if the porcupine kills a tree. They strip all the bark off of it because they're eating it. That's one of their food sources. They require a lot of 
vitamin C and things like that, the nutrients in the bark. So that kills that tree. The insects move in and they start to decompose the tree, but that also gives a lot of food for woodpeckers and other birds that eat insects. That tree is going to be full of food for other animals because that porcupine killed that one tree. Now, also when that tree is dead, it leaves more nutrients for the surrounding trees. It also, as the insects are eating that tree and causing that sawdust to come out the other end and the fecal matter from those little bugs that are decomposing and eating the tree, is going to provide nutrients back into the soil for those other trees. So not having that one tree around is feeding a lot of other trees. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that porcupines are eating a couple of trees. Now where it can become a bit problematic is in fruit orchards and things like that where the porcupines are getting in and there's a lot of food for them so they're breeding and they're just kind of overrunning the place. I mean that that could be a problem but just in the general scheme of things out in the middle of nowhere like where I am there's no need for people to be going around killing every porcupine they see. That's just ridiculous and it's totally unneeded. So anyway, I should get back to making my porcupine quill earrings and we can discuss porcupines more later.